Our Bible word is Matthew 14 verse 32. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. So this is the account of Jesus walking on the water. And this happened on the Sea of Galilee. It's also known by other names, for example, the Sea or Lake of Tiberias, etc. But this Sea of Galilee, of course, it was at the center of Jesus' ministry, so to speak, because many events happened on the lake or, or around the lake. And this was a very important form of income or economics of the area because of course it's also a place for fishing. Uh, many famous towns or cities from the Gospels were right situated on the lake like Capernaum and also Mary of Magdala. Magdala was a place situated on the coast of the Sea of Galilee. It was, Magdala was a place famous for its salted fish. So it was a very important place in terms of the local economy for fishing, etc. And of course, it was also a way for the local, like King Herod and also the Romans, to extract taxes, extra revenue from this local economy of fishing on the lake. But Sea of Galilee, this is the lowest fresh water lake in the world. And it's actually situated just over 200 meters beneath below sea level and it's fed by of course the river Jordan it also by a few local springs but it's situated about 200 meters below sea level and it actually forms part of the, the Jordan Rift Valley which is an extension of the African Rift Valley where these different plates are pulling apart so it's causing this rift and of course from the Sea of Galilee it flows via the Jordan River to the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is about 430 meters below sea level. So that's quite interesting to know that these two lakes, also the Sea of Galilee, is situated below sea level. And it's about 20 kilo, 21 kilometers long from north to south. And at its widest point, it was 13 kilometers wide. So it was quite, quite a big sea. And it's, of course, made of, it's a freshwater sea. And now, Jesus was on the eastern shore somewhere. Because at the end of this account, we read that they ended up being at Gennesaret. That's on the western end of the lake. So Jesus traveled from the east to the, or the disciples first, traveled by a boat from the east to the west and Jesus actually instructed them you walk on before me and if you look at our textual unit it is Matthew 14 verses 22 to 33 and that is where Jesus walks on the sea the sea of Galilee so first Jesus instructs them go ahead of me and he ordered his followers go ahead of me I'll catch up with you later and then Jesus actually went all by himself up to a mountain to pray. And now the disciples, they were, basically it's explained here, they were in the middle of the sea and tossed by the waves for the wind was contrary. So in other words, the wind was against them. It was not, didn't help them to reach their destination. And now, in verse 25 it says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And the fourth watch refers to this time period of about 3 in the morning to 6 in the morning. So somewhere between 3 and 6 in the morning, Jesus now started arriving, coming to where they were on the boat. And of course they are having these difficulties with the waves, the wind blowing against them. And then it says, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. So, of course, you can sympathize with the disciples because they're there. And they see somebody walking on the water. Because normally water was also associated with spirits. It was the realm of the deep. Normally also kind of a place of evil, evil forces. So there was probably also this association. He has an evil ghost or an evil spirit that's come out of the water 
to torment or to attack them. So these are these disciples, they are scared. But then immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Normally when there's also a kind of divine visitation, be it God or the angels appearing to people, those words, or the people who initially will be shocked and afraid, then normally there will also be these words of comfort, do not be afraid. It is I, Jesus says here. So he tells them, it's not a ghost, it's not a spirit, it's me, I'm walking on the water. And then verse 28, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. It's also interesting to note here that it's, it's for the first time here that Peter comes to prominence in the Gospel of Matthew. And it's quite important also to know that Peter enjoys prominence in the Gospel of Matthew. And his prominence is already suggested in earlier passages. If you go to chapter 17 verses 24 to 27, it's, it's that's where Peter is instructed to find a coin in a fish to pay taxes for himself and Jesus. And also, Peter comes to prominence where he asks Jesus how many times it's necessary to forgive somebody. That we find in chapter 18. And Matthew also expands on Mark. Remember, Mark was our first gospel written, and many portions of Mark we also find in Matthew. And where Peter appears in the passages in Mark, Matthew, or the author of the gospel of Matthew, also expands a little bit in it to make Peter appear a bit more prominent, more important. For example, here, where Peter actually walks on water, and also when Peter acknowledges Jesus as the Messiah, then Jesus also refers to him, you the rock on which he will build his church. That's in chapter 16. So, more prominence is given to Peter in the Gospel of Matthew. Also, rock I mean, is Aramaic name of Simon, Cephas, that means rock. Peter, the Greek Petros from which it's derived, also means rock. So Jesus is in a sense saying, yeah, you are rock and upon this rock I will build my church. So this is, this is play on words in the original languages. But yeah, Peter comes to prominence, especially here, yeah, he walks on water yeah, in the Gospel of Matthew. And, and of course he sees the water around him and now he realizes where he's at, what he's doing. He becomes afraid and he begins to sink. If we read there, verse 30, But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. So Jesus, of course, grabbed him and also rebuked him, also like he did before. Remember there was this early episode also Recording the Gospel of Matthew, that's where Jesus calms the storm on the sea. That's in chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. And Jesus also told them there, Oh, you of little faith. Similar thing here, he tells Peter, Why do you have such little faith? Why do, why do you have so little trust in me? And when they come to the boat, they climb onto the boat, and that is when the wind again ceased. And this is also a nature miracle. Like we find different kind of nature miracles in the Gospels, where Jesus feeds the people with loaves and fishes, and where Jesus calms the storm. Yeah, again, it's kind of similar, but also he walks on the water, and he also calms the waves and the, and the wind that happen at this time. The difference between this account and the earlier account in Matthew is where in chapter 8, where they're in the storm and then Jesus rebukes the wind, etc. and stills the storm. The, the disciples ask there, who, who is this? They haven't come to know who Jesus really is. And yeah, in our present account in chapter 14, there's development in their understanding. There's a deeper under, understanding of Jesus. Because if we go towards the end, now when Jesus 
after he calmed the waters, etc., when he climbed into the boat, it says there in verse 33, Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So he has a recognition. It's they worship Jesus. In other words, they, they, they prostrate themselves before him. And there's recognition. You are the Son of God. We are somehow in the presence of God, or this or this agent of God, to be in the presence of holiness, of something special. So there's also this character development, this development in understanding of the disciples. So yes, Jesus is walking on the sea, and Peter he rises to prominence also here, because he asks Jesus also to walk on the water with him. And he did for a while, but then he started to sink. So it's about having trust, this faith in Jesus.